Do you think Arya will kill a White Walker or even the Night King with the Valyrian steel dagger? What is her role now in the battle for the dawn? I know we're talking about the show here, but George R. R. Martin often likes to allude to great works of fiction. In J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, there is a character known as the Witch King of Angmar. During the Siege of Gondor, the Witch King of Angmar is slain by Eowyn, daughter of Eomund. Be gone, foul Dremelaic, Lord of Carrion, leave the dead in peace. Come not between the Nazgul and his prey, or he will not slay thee in thy turn. He will bear thee away to the houses of lamentation, beyond all darkness, where thy flesh shall be devoured, and thy shriveled mind be left naked to the lidless eye. Do what you will, but I will hinder it if I may. Hinder me, thou fool, no living man may hinder me, but no living man am I. In The Lord of the Rings, Eowyn is a woman who disguises herself as a man so that she can fight for Middle-earth. Because of this, I've always thought that it would be perfect if Brienne killed the Night King. She's the perfect example of a woman living in a man's world, and she has the Valyrian steel sword. I think this would kind of work for Arya too, but better for Brienne. Bran did give Arya the dagger, and everything that Bran's doing at this point has a purpose. The dagger must be significant on some level because they've certainly drawn a lot of attention to it. Everyone is expecting Jon Snow to kill the Night King. It would certainly change things up a bit if it was Arya instead. Do the Theta, Spiral, or Sun imagery appear in A Song of Ice and Fire or are they show only? As far as I know, they are show only, though the Theta symbol has appeared in a story George R. R. Martin wrote called In the House of the Worm which may be a reference to The House of the Worm by Gary Myers, which kind of takes place in the Lovecraft universe. I say kind of because Lovecraft didn't write it, and this guy was just kind of like writing in the style of Lovecraft, and he was kind of continuing the Cthulhu mythos and that kind of stuff. I really don't like the fact that Dorne is still without a proper ruler. Also, who's in charge for Storm's Inn, Dreadfort, The Twins, Harrenhal, Riverrun, and all the other ghost castles that didn't appear in the show anymore? There is still room for political intrigue in Game of Thrones anyway? As far as the show is concerned, political intrigue is a thing of the past. They're much more concerned at this point with huge developments in the grand scope of the story. And as far as the castles you mentioned, it did strike me as odd that the Dreadfort wasn't mentioned because they did bring up Last Hearth and Carhold, but I have to say, since we are watching a TV show, they really can't mention everything, and I mean they really can't. When you're reading a book, like the author can pretty much lay everything out for you, and I'm not saying George R. R. Martin lays everything out for you, but it's easier to get that kind of stuff across in a book than in a TV show, especially now because they've, we have even less time at this point. And that's also a reason that the political intrigue has gone away is that time and they're focusing on the big, major, huge plot developments. What are the dragons eating since they came over from Essos? Well, I would imagine since we've been seeing them at the ocean this entire time that they've been fishing. Because we've seen them fish in the past, she sailed the ocean with them both in the books and in the show, so I would imagine that they've been fishing and there's plenty of big prey in the sea for them to eat. Why did Danny only use Drogon and not all three dragons? Well, I've heard people say that it's because she can only control one of them at a time, but that's really not true if you remember just last season when all three dragons burned those ships at Marine. I think the reasonable answer here is the budget. They didn't have the budget for all three of them, so we ended up with one. And they've done stuff like that before in the past. Uh, when Danny is in Astapor in the books, she releases all three of her dragons, but in the show we just get Drogon. It's, it's a budget thing. Why hasn't Jon been made a legitimized Stark? How can he be King of the North if he's still a bastard? Well, Josh Farrell Splicer, the answer to that question is because the plot says so. This is not a question that a typical show watcher would ask, or even know to ask about. Bottom line is, people don't care about the show being logically consistent anymore, if they ever really did. A very common sentiment on my last video was, 
Hey man, this show has got dragons. Anything can happen. And it really shows you the type of people that HBO are targeting. People that really don't have any respect for the fantasy genre and don't realize that even in fantasy, things have to be internally consistent. As long as they have those big fan service moments, they will never disappoint the vast majority of people. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Ideas of Ice and Fire.